Hi, Margaret at Mueller Guide, and what I want to share with you today is some ways to start waking up your feet. Most of us have worn shoes most of our life, and that um, makes our feet pretty squashed into our shoes, and not having had an opportunity to use all the little muscles and keep the joints flexible. So, some real treats if you can um, either you can start with a tennis ball. Um, but I really like the soft foam uh, street hockey balls to get into the spaces um, underneath the feet. So in our feet, we have long bones that go down to each toe. And the idea is we're going to be working in the space between each of the long bones. So if you can kind of visualize that from the base of the heel to the knuckles of the toes. So most of my clients find that starting this from a sitting position, remembering when you're coming down nice flat back as you put the ball down. We're going to place the foot directly over the ball just on the inside of the heel. So not actually on the heel, but closer to the arch. And we'll start on the outside, closer to the baby toe. And I'm aiming to bring the ball into the space, the web space between fifth and the fourth. So it's a really nice massage just going back and forth in that space. You might want to spend a little more time on each one, but I'm going to move forward. This time I've just rolled the ball roughly about a half an inch or a bit more than a centimeter. And it's now just a little bit more um, to the center, not quite center because I'm going into in the direction of the web space between the fourth and third toe. Good. So where you place your foot is going to allow you to put more or less pressure. So before even standing, you can add pressure by putting a little weight on the leg and just really working through. It should feel like a delicious pressure. It should not be at all uncomfortable or painful. So that's important. You're just really waking up plantar fascia, all the muscles of your toes are at the base of your feet, so lovely. Not all, but most. And now we're going to move it to the center of the heel and massage in the direction of the web space between the second and third toe and all the way back. And if you have a particular spot that you go, oh, that's really tender, just lighten up the pressure. And every time you do it, just pay a little bit more attention to that, but never going into a point that it's uncomfortable or painful. But as you approach that, and then we'll go moving the ball a little bit more to the outside, as you approach that tender spot every day with respect, and I do say that and not in a joking fashion, fashion, but go, wow, you know, I never realized you were tender, so I'm going to just gently massage you every day and see if we can, you know, gradually have you handle a little bit more pressure. And so that's a really nice thing to do. And more pressure would eventually mean being able to do this in standing. I feel my right foot going, me too. But um, for purposes of today, I'm just going to demonstrate on one foot. Heel is going to stay down. And this time, we're fanning the foot over the ball. So we're just going from the outside all the way to the inside. The knee is rotating with the foot, so the rotation is happening from the hip joint. And as I do it, I'm going to move the ball a little further now into the midfoot and back in. And taking it a little higher, just beneath the knuckles. There's my knuckles of my toes. So we're just beneath the knuckles of the toes. It feels lovely all the way across. And you can just fan all the way back towards the heel. So just make these nice sweeping motions, remembering that that rotation is happening from the hip joint so that your knee and your foot move as one. Good. Perfect. I decided since you have two feet and you need to work both feet, 
that you probably won't do it. You'll be like my clients and you won't do it unless I do it or have you do it with me. So let's massage from the outside, base of the heel to the knuckle and all the way back. And once more, base of the heel to the web space between fifth and fourth. Good, moving now in slightly, moving towards the web space between fourth and third and back. And we'll do two on each because it feels too delicious just to do one. And now web space between second and third toe. So it's as though you're really just trying to get into the little muscles all between the long bones of your feet. Good. And now lastly, between a big toe and index the index of your toe, second toe. It's good to think of your index and work it like that. Good. Nice. And now we drop the heel down and we do this fan-like sweeping right across the foot. Good. And moving your body or slowly moving the, your heel out, whatever allows you to get that nice sweeping motion Remembering that the rotation is coming all the way from the hip. So you're just sweeping across. And once more back and forth. Now you've reached your knuckles. So we're working our way back towards our heel. Just sweeping all the way across the arch. Adjust to where it feels. If you want a bit more pressure, and you want to bring it in and maybe put a little bit more weight through your hand. And eventually you can, as I mentioned earlier, do this in standing. All right. So lovely thing to do. Now, we're going to place the ball just beneath the knuckles of the foot. Heel stays down. We're going to curl the toes around the ball and stretch. We're going to do five. Curl and stretch. Three more, two, and one. Stretching the toes, lovely. And other side. And curl and stretch. Two, three, four, and five. Excellent. Now, with this next one, you might find it easier to place your foot on your chair or on a stool depending on how much external rotation you have in your hips. So I have a lot of external rotation meaning ability to turn my hip out. I recognize not everybody does. So if you don't you might find it easier to sit back and actually you know maybe support this foot. But what we're going to be doing is stretching the web space between our toes. So often if toes have been confined in shoes that we start to get bunions, we start to get the toes squashed one on top of the other, sometimes starting to cross each other. And the alignment of our toes is so very important. So what I would like you to do, taking both your hands, sitting tall in whatever way that allows you to do that, is to take the spiff, so hold nice and supportively through your thumb and so you're not just grabbing the tips, but rather really just holding in a supportive manner the whole of the toe. And it feels absolutely lovely. You're just opening the space between the toes. So between your big toe and your second. And you can hold as long as you want. But for purposes today, I'm just going to hold each stretch for three or four seconds. But I know your toes would love you to do this much longer. So if you have an opportunity to do that later in the day. And so now we're moving to the next two toes in between third and fourth. Nice breath and nice stretch. Oh, I just have a little tiny toe. And one of 11 kids, I think my feet got squashed into too many other people's shoes as I grew up. I rescued them as a lifeguard, stretching in the summertime. Um, big toe goes down, second toe comes up. 
And then second toe goes down, big toe comes up. Now, for a lot of people, when they first do these, they go, whoa, that's really uncomfortable. Just go to the point that it just feels like a comfortable stretch. And each day that you do these, your toes will thank you. We have all the same muscles, joints, ligaments in our feet as we have in our hands. And if you think of the potential that our feet never got to experience, at least the stretch is something for them. So now the big toe is down, fourth toe is up. So we're just moving, changing direction, fourth toe down, third toe up. Third toe down, second toe up. And lastly, big toe up and second toe down. And we'll take our toe stretches to the opposite side. So nice support through the toes and improving the stretch between the web space, between big toe and second, between second and third, and at the very, very least, when you're drying your toes after a bath or a shower, this is a lovely time to go in and stretch your toes, put a towel in there, really get in and gently and slowly start to put maybe a little bit more towel and give those toes a nice opportunity to stretch. And now we're going to bring big toe down and second toe up. Second toe down and third toe up. Third toe down, fourth toe up. And some of them, you think, oh, these ones are tighter than others. And all our feet are very unique. Fourth toe down, baby toe up. And we return in reverse. So the little toe goes down, fourth toe comes up. Fourth toe goes down. Third toe goes up. Third toe down. And second toe up. And lastly, second toe down and big toe up. These feel so nice, and hopefully you find that too, that this would be a nice treat that you could give yourself even for after you do your balance exercises, you know, you could do some pre to warm up your feet and go, that felt so good. I think I'll do some after as well. Now, the important thing when working on balance, there's so many components to it, but another one is flexibility through the ankle. So if you find that you have a hard time pointing your toes down, I'm gonna show you a stretch that is going to gradually make that easier. So if you have a rolled up blanket, and what I'm going to do is go down on my knees with the blanket underneath my ankles. So if you have not sat back on your heels in a long time, you can start with one or two pillows. So we'll start with two pillows. And you'll sit back and that makes for a really nice ankle stretch. And over time, what I would encourage you to do is gradually use less pillow and less roll. So this might take you a month, it might take you two months, it doesn't matter. So then you would gradually unroll. So I think you get the picture and with time, Maybe just use one pillow and less roll. Always thinking, oh, nice opportunity to sit up tall. This is great if you're expecting grandchildren in your life. So you can, you know, come down onto the floor like this with your grandchildren. And 
then with time, you might find that you never get your feet all the way flat. Everybody's different. Some people have more flexible ankles than others. You might find, oh, you know, just having a little bit of support underneath the ankle feels good and you have the flexibility to sit back. Or you might find that you always need a little bit underneath, either just to open up the knee joint or right underneath the bottom. And either way, it's a really great way to keep your ankles flexible and gives you a really nice sitting option um, when working with little people or not so little people. Um, so that's uh, a really great way to stretch to anterior. Next stretch is going to be on to stretching your calf and soleus muscles. Okay, so here's a stretch for your calf. And using a yoga mat um, or a soft foam roller, half foam roller, you can place your foot on the mat. And if you don't feel the stretch with the other foot behind, you can place, you can walk forward another two inches and if you still don't feel a stretch, you keep going forward until you start to feel a nice stretch in the calf muscle of the foot supported on the yoga mat. And then you can hold the stretch for 30 seconds. Perfect. Now, if you wanted to get another muscle underneath the calf, that's your soleus. So I'm going to come back and that would be bending the knee. And then once again, just as you did with the calf stretch, bring the other opposite foot forward, using support if you need it, supporting your hands on a chair for balance, but getting a nice stretch through the soleus muscle, as well as the calf with the straight knee to keep your ankles flexible for balance. Be sure to do both sides. I'm Margaret from Guide. Thanks for tuning in.